Alrighty. Looks like I am live. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to do another video. This one is going to be about some sci-fi fantasy books that I just finished reading. The books I'm going to talk about are Sorrowland, Firebreak, and The Shadow in the Glass. These are, again, sci-fi fantasy based books. So, let's just get into it. But first, let me show you my quickly made intro. And I'm back. So. Let's see. What we can talk about here. Alrighty. So. First book I'm going to talk about. Will be. Shadow in the Glass. Now, this book sounded really interesting to me. Um, I'll read the uh, description of it so you can get an idea of, of why I thought it sounded interesting. Um, a deliciously gothic story of wishes and curses, a new dark fairy tale set against a Victorian backdrop full of lace and smoke. Once upon a time, Ella has wished for more than her life as a lonely maid. Now forced to work hard under the unforgiving, lecherous gaze of the man she once called stepfather, Ellie's own new refuge is in the book she reads by candlelight. Secreted away in the library she isn't permitted to enter. One night among her beloved books of far off lands, Ella's wishes are answered. At the stroke of midnight, a fairy godmother makes her an offer that will change her life. Seven wishes, hers to make as she pleases, but each wish comes with a price, and Ella must decide whether it is the, the one she is willing to pay. A smoldering, terrifying new spin on Cinderella, perfect for fans of Laura Purcell and Erin Morgenstern. Okay, so this sounded interesting to me. Honestly, I really, when I first read this synopsis, I thought, oh my god, this is really cool. I mean, because I like, like, basically this is like a gin story. I like that kind of story. I like the whole wishes thing. Um, when you read the story, you find that actually that this doesn't tell you is that the seven wishes that she makes, once she finishes the seventh wish, she loses her soul. So then it becomes a bargain story, a devil type of bargain story. And, um, you know, actually, when she actually meets this fairy godmother or this djinn, however you want to call her, she's actually reading Faust. Um, so that's really where this this comes from and i said oh this sounds really interesting it's a whole gothic thing you know victorian there's this mage um this uh lecherous uh man uh i think it's, it's his name is pen pen pengrove pengrave i forgot his name something like that who who gets gets women pregnant and then just like abandons them and, and he, he obviously takes way advantage of, of all these other women. And she's worried about the other staff who are her, you know, who are her friends, who are co-workers. Um, there's a, there's a, like a, a head um, housekeeper that, um, or head maid housekeeper that actually is not a very good person as well. But the problem I had with this story, one of the, the biggest problems I had with this story. Let me, let me get this um, thing back here. Uh, is that this shadow in the glass it's just really really um, 
so predictable. I mean, I'll tell you, like, the first wish, and you could probably predict where this is going, okay? Uh, when, when Ella finds out that she can make these wishes, you know, her first wish is, I want to wish for something small. All right, so she wishes for slippers. And suddenly, you know, she wakes up the next day and there's slippers, you know, I'll say on the, on the chair next to her or something like that, or on the floor next to her. But somehow she has like scuff marks on her hands or, you know, she's dirty and she doesn't know where, you know, how she got that. And did she go out? She doesn't know why. I think you can figure out that every single wish that she starts to make, you know, to try to either free her from this 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 lecherous person or to she went to f- falling in love with somebody and to try to you know, get sap- happiness with that person and to try to save her you know the other people who work for this guy every single wish she has basically as, after after she makes that wish you know you see that she has uh, you know different kinds of injuries or different kind of you know maybe she, there's money missing from her purse or something like that you can pretty much figure out what's going on because she has like lapses of memory of like, how did this happen? Um, people start dying from these wishes. Um, so again, you see where where it's going. I mean, I think it's it's. It, I'm just telling you in basic terms. I think you know where this is going. And the problem with this story is, yeah, I'm waiting for the seven wishes because you know the seventh wish is when she's going to lose her soul, right? That's the seventh wish. So I'm waiting for that seventh wish, but it's like I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Like, this is so predictable. And then it's like, okay, well, let's just get to the seven wishes so then we could see what, what we all already know is going to happen. And they even screw that up. You know, yes, the ending is is, is kind of Cinderella, Cinderella type, I guess. But, oh my God, it, it just, it, it was not, to me, satisfying because it, it's just so predictable. And while I did like the Victorian um part of this stuff it just it dragged on to it just was predictable and it dragged on a long time between wishes long time between each each wish and you knew where, where it was gonna go so it just to me was like i i would give this maybe like a two star this is not even this is barely a two star book sadly i i was this is one of the books i was actually most excited to read and this was one of the books that i was actually least um happy with out of all three of these books So, sadly, that is my review of Shadow in the Glass by J.J.A. Harwood. Next book I'm going to talk about. While I have some problems with it, um, I actually did find this uh, an enjoyable book. Um, This is Sorrowland, a novel. Now, let me read what this is about. Um, Let me pull this over a little bit. Vern, seven months pregnant and desperate to escape the strict religious compound where she was raised, flees to the shelter of the woods... There she gives birth to twins and plans to raise them far from the influence of the outside world. But even in the forest, Vern is a hunted woman, forced to fight back against a community that refuses to let her go. She unleashes incredibly bu- incredible brutality, far beyond what a person should be capable of. Her body racked by inexplicable, or inexplicable and uncanny changes. To understand her metamorphosis and to protect her small family, Varen has to face the past and, more troubling, the future outside the woods. Finding the truth will mean uncovering the secrets of the compound she fled, but also the violent history in America that produced it. River Solomon and Sorrowland is a genre-bending work of gothic fiction. Here, monsters aren't just individuals, but entire nations. It is a searing, seminal book that marks the arrival of a bold... Uh, Unignorable voice in American fiction. Okay, so this Sorrowland. I like this book. This is definitely you know sci-fi, almost horror elements of it. You know, basically a a transformation, kind of like a monster transformation story. And you find out about Vern. You find that she was in basically kind of like this cult. But there's some more into it. Like first off, why is she changing? Why, why is this cult uh, so protected? You know, because basically, you find out about this cult. Basically, it's kind of like an uh, an anti-white, uh, black militant cult. And you wonder, you know, why is this cult being, 
you know, when people try to escape this cult, they can't escape. They wind up, you know, being brought back. And you, you, you feel, why does this cult have all this power? Why is she changing into whatever she's changing into, which you find out about? And the way she, you know, she actually views the world, and you, you hear about her history, how she got into the cult, and how and how she, you know, basically lived her life, and and what this cult was about. And it's it's a very mystery driven kind of book because you find out, you know, step by step what's happening. And and this is, I've and in Sorrowland, this woman is, is a black woman, obviously, and you know, and you deal, she deals with her kids, and she deals with the outside world that her kids have never seen before because they grew up in this cult, and. In a way, it actually does have some good social commentary, um, kind of like the other book that I had talked about before that I didn't like, The Other Black Girl. This one I actually did like because I thought it it took some real things that happened in American history and kind of like put some fantasy, horror, gothic type of um, spin to it. So I did really like that. In fact, the, the only thing... And maybe for me, it, it's kind of a uh, just a nitpick type of thing. Is I didn't like the sexuality in the book. Not that I have anything problem. To, you know, there, there's lesbian sex, like bleh, there's lesbian sexuality and there's gay sexuality. I have no problem with that at all. I just felt like it was kind of excessive in some spots and also like just not needed. You know, I don't mind. You know, I, I, I don't mind any kind of sexuality in my books. I've just finished reading a Bedley Little book, and if you know anything about those books, there's always some sexuality, and usually weird sexuality in those kind of books. So I have no problem with sexuality in those in those books, but Sorrowland to me just kind of pushed a little bit, and that kind of pulled it back for me, giving it maybe like a four or five star review because the sexuality kind of pushed it away. But I still think this is a a good book. I would definitely recommend it. Just know before you get into it that there is some sexuality. Um, I believe there is some animal cruelty as well in this book, if I'm not mistaken. But um, it's it's a very well done book. It's actually uh, I I really uh, acknowledge what they've done there. I just wish that the the author wouldn't have kind of like pushed her graphic sexuality into this book a little too much. And like I said, maybe call me a prude for that, but I just felt like it didn't fit with this story as much. It, you know, I don't want sexuality in the book, but I just felt like it just pushed a little too much. Um, and that's my review of Sorrowland. I don't want to tell too much about it because I don't want to spoil it for people, but I definitely think it's a book that I would recommend people to read. Now we get to the last book, which is actually more of a, a sci-fi book you know, than, than the other two. Because you have the, you know, one was more fantasy and the other one was, this, you know, the other one was more kind of like a horror gothic uh, monster. This one is actually uh, more of like a Ready Player One type of fantasy book. And this is called Firebreak. Now, I really liked Ready Player One. Never read Ready Player Two. I think it's a sequel. Um, I remember, I think Marie, was it Marie Lou who did like War? War? Was it Warme? Warframe, I think it was called. I forgot what the name of the title was. But um, it was just kind of a YA kind of version of kind of like, a, you know, a person in a game. And that's what Firebreak is about, basically. This this character uh, who's in this game. I forgot her name, actually, off the top of my head. But there's this woman who has, you know, another person. They kind of have like a team. And they go into this game. And the way the world is set up is... That there's basically these, you know, it's war. There's a big war between these two rival factions, and kind of like they gamified it as well. So they have the real war, the, the real war, going on, but there's also kind of like a fictional kind of, you know, alternate virtual reality of the war as well going on. So what people get to do is play in a fictional part of the war, and then there are these characters who are kind of like they turn these soldiers, I guess who are supposed to be AI soldiers, into kind of superheroes. You know, they, they, they make action figures about them. They're in the game. That people get to see them in the game. And, and you know, it's, it's a big deal. And each person who is broadcasting the game, kind of like, it's like a Twitch stream type of deal where they're basically getting followers. They're getting, you know, uh, money and cash. Or actually, in, in this kind of apocalyptic world like like they just need water they, they get like water rations because they, they get very little water it's a, it's a very uh tough world to live in 
and you know her and this other other player they wind up um meeting this this one uh special superhero uh soldier you know they, they have them by numbers i forgot the number he was it was, it was 22 or some other but this person they, they meet online and that that's how it ends and then they meet this sponsor who tells them a story about these actual what's supposed to be ai uh characters and it starts becoming like what's behind the actual video game of the war connected to the real war connected to these these actual supposedly action figure ai characters who they really are what they really are and you know it's just again it's just taking out the veneer of what's underneath this world and it was done well like i said this is one of my favorite books i you know this kind of uh, gamified um uh, fiction you know i've read i've only read a few of them and I did enjoy this one. I, I felt like you know it had the beginning, middle, and end, basically kind of like a Ready Player One. Even though I don't know what the sequel was, but I did really enjoy this this sci-fi. And and it's this author, the Corher Stace of her debut. And if you like Ready Player One, if you like Warframe, and you like those kind of you know those kind of like gamified type of stories. I think you would like it. I, you know, it definitely, you know, goes through the game world and then she has to go into the real world. So it's more of kind of like a straddling the both of the real world and the game world. It definitely has a mystery kind of a little bit involved. Um, and it's, it, it's more of like, kind of like, oh my God, now I've, I've uncovered the secret and now they're kind of after me and, and how to protect myself. So it's really good. And, and the way she kind of interacts with everybody and the heart that this, this person shows and again, if you're a fan of the games too, the way she actually streams and how she actually interacts with people and this world, this apocalyptic world that was created was really done well. Um, and again, this is probably one of my favorite books. I mean, it's not perfect. You know, honestly, you know, Ready Player One and maybe even Warframe it might be a little bit better than this, but it's still a very well done book. I still really enjoyed it. Definitely would give it four stars, not five, but I would give it four stars. And again, out of all three books that I've read, uh, this is is my favorite uh, story. So that is Firebreak by Nicole Cornerstace. And those are the three books that I've reviewed today that I've just read. And oh, hey, look at this. I have a couple of... Uh, Live chat conversation. Sometimes I don't even look at these while I'm talking about it. So uh, let's see. Hey, haven't seen you in a while. How are you? I'm doing great. And um, so thanks, thanks for the ten minute book reviews for commenting on my on my site here and my videos. And again, when I go live here, I'm just trying to uh, just do these videos really quickly. It's easier to to do them without having to edit them. Um, and again, I'm sorry if I'm not getting to anybody's comments right away because I'm just focusing on the screen here and focusing on doing the book reviews. But thanks again for commenting. And yeah, I'll be doing more videos. I'm trying to do this on a regular basis. I really do enjoy uh, using this Apple uh, laptop and learning how to use OBS and learning how to do all this kind of stuff. So uh, besides that, again, if you've seen this video, thanks again for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you soon. So, see you soon. Bye.